Hey everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Jan Zuiderduin and I'm the founder of LearnSolidWorks.com. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to model this beautiful double walled class in SolidWorks. And in order to model the shape, we're going to use a blueprint. So you can download the blueprint and a SolidWorks file of this model in the link under this video. And on top of that, I'm also going to show you how to make a beautiful rendering of your glass in PhotoView 360 and how to add ice cubes and liquids in your rendering using Adobe Photoshop. So it will be a lot of fun today, so let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new part in SolidWorks. So therefore we're going to File, click on New, and select a new part. Click OK. All right, we have a blank screen right here. And I first want to make our planes visible. So in the left side of the screen, you can find our feature tree. And here you can find three planes. They are invisible right now. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to select them by holding down the control key. And now we're going to release the control key and click on show, the small eye icon to show the planes. And now the planes are visible. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our measurements is on uh, millimeters. So if you go to the right corner, you can change the document units. And for this video, make sure it's on millimeters. So we select millimeters. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a blueprint. So we select the front plane and we create a new 2D sketch by clicking on the 2D sketch icon. All right, so for this lesson, we're going to use this blueprint. Uh, you can download the blueprint in the link under this video, all right? All right, so save the blueprint to your computer and now go to Tools, Sketch Tools, and click on Sketch Picture. Now we're going to browse to our blueprint folder and we select the blueprint and click OK. All right, there is our blueprint. So now we're going to change the transparency of our blueprint. Therefore, we go to the transparency box right here and we click on full image. And now we can change the trans transparency to 0.5, for example, 0.5, just like that. And we're going to use this blue line uh, to define the height and scale of our blueprint. So in this case, I want to make sure that our glass is 61 millimeters high. So we select this purple point and we drag it to the bottom of our glass. Just like that. Now we're going to select the second point of the blue line and we're going to drag it in a vertical position. And we're going to make sure that it's that the height of the line is equal to the, to the highest point of our blueprint. Just like that. And now we're going to make sure that this dimension, this, the size of this line is 61 millimeters. Just like that. All right, guys. So, our, so the height of our blueprint is 61 millimeters right now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, change the position of the blueprint and we make sure it will be in the center of our model. So we can double click on the image and drag the image to change the position. So we're going to place it roughly on top of our origin, just like that. And as you can see in this box, the width and height of our image is 85.6 millimeters. So if we want to make sure it's on the center of our plane, we can copy this dimension, copy, and we can paste it right in here. So it's minus 85.6, and now we can divide it by two. So we type in a slash and add a an two and enter. So now the center of our image is at the center of the plane. All right, so we click OK. Now we're going to close this sketch. All right, it's already looking pretty good. 
So we're going to change the name of this um, sketch. So you click once on sketch one. We're going to change the name into blueprint. Click enter. All right, guys. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to save our file. So you click on save and give your file a name. So we're going to call this file double word plus. Click OK. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a revolve in order to model this shape in SolidWorks. So we're going to create a new sketch on the front plane. So select the front plane and click on the 2D sketch icon again. So now we're going to use a couple of straight lines in order to make this shape. And then we're going to create a curve in order to model those two shapes, All right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a vertical line. So click on line and we start the line on the origin and we make sure that, the, that it's matching the height of our blueprint up till here. And I, if you click on right click, select, you can enter the line command. And to make get a better view on this, I'm going to hide the planes for now. So you can select them here and click on hide, or you can also go to view, hide show, and hide all planes at once. So click on this one. Now the planes are hidden and we can clearly see our line. And I'm going to change the dimension of this line. So click on smart dimension. And we're going to apply a height of 61 millimeters for this line. Click OK. All right. Now we're going to draw a horizontal line. So click on the line again and draw a line from here to here. And if you press escape, you can also cancel the line command. And if you press enter again, you can reactivate the line command. So now we're going to draw a horizontal line from the origin up till around here and click escape again to close the sketch. All right, so now we're going to add some dimensions to those lines. So click on smart dimensions and we're going to apply a length of 26 millimeters for here. And we're going to add a length of 14.5 millimeters for the horizontal line on the lower side, just like that. Click OK. And now we're going to draw a curve right here. I think we need to make this line a little bit longer. So we double click on 26 and change it into 28, for example. It's a little bit too much. Maybe 27. Yeah, that's about it. And this line can be 13, I think. Yeah, all right. That looks better. And now we're going to draw a curve from here to here. So we're going to the three point arc command. You can find it right here. And you can also find it under tools, sketch entities, three point arc. Now we're going to draw a line starting from here to here. And the third point will be around here to match match our glass just like that we're going to close this one and as you can see the model doesn't fit the blueprint exactly right here so we're going to change this size into 50 millimeters i think that will look better and now we're going to apply a smart dimension on this curve so go to smart dimension click this curve and we change the size into 59. It's a little bit too little. So change it into 62. Yeah, this looks pretty good. All right. Click OK. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw this inner line. And therefore, we're going to use the spline command. So go to spline. You can find it right here. And we click on the first point of our spline and the end point of our spline. It's about here, I think. 
just like that uh, click on right click and click on select all right so now we're going to make this curve and therefore we select the endpoint of a spline and this will activate our spline handle and if we drag on the on the gray spline point right here we can change the curve of our spline so we want to make sure that it is uh, horizontal on this point so therefore i will click on the end point of the spline arc and click on horizontal to add a horizontal dimension just like that and the second end point we want to modify as well so we click on this point and now we can change the spline of this this side as well so i think it will need to be somewhere around here just like that now we're going to add some dimensions to it in order to define our spline so click on smart dimensions and select this endpoint and we'll give it a value of 41 millimeters and this endpoint will be 95 millimeters and now we're going to add an angle to this line so click on this endpoint click on this horizontal line and we're going to make sure that this angle is 85 degrees just like that all right guys this already starting to look very good but as you can see this line is still blue so it's not fully defined and that's because we didn't uh, define those endpoints so we're going to make another smart dimension and we're going to add a dimension this horizontal line to this endpoint right here and we're going to make sure that the size is eight millimeters just like that now we're going to add another uh, smart dimension from this endpoint to this vertical line of 25.5 yes and as you can see this line is also black so this means this model is fully defined now the next thing we're going to do is we, we're going to revolve this model but therefore we want to make sure that this is the center line so this piece of the line will be a center line and this piece will be a center line as well so we click ok we're going to select those two lines and we change it into for constriction just like that and now we're going to make sure that we add another line on top of this line so there are a small horizontal line right here click escape to close the line sketch and we're going to draw a second vertical line from here to here so go to line again click on the origin and click on this endpoint click ok to close it and you can see that the sketch is turning in a dark color right now so this means this is a closed volume so click escape to close the line command and now we're going to create a revolve so go to features and click on revolve the boss base and the axis of revolution of our model will be the vertical line in the center so click on the axis of revolution box and select the vertical center line and here you can see our revolve so click ok all right it's already looking pretty good the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some fillets so go to fillet we're going to select this upper surface and we're going to change the fillet dimension into 0.5 millimeters just like that perfect and now we're going to add another fillet on the bottom of our glass so click on fillet select this edge and we change the size into three millimeters for example click ok all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide our blueprint because we don't need it anymore so click on the blueprint 
and select the height option to hide our blueprint. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the material of our glass. Right click on the material tab, go to edit material. Now we're going to browse to a glass material. So we're going to hide the steel folder, go to other non metals and click on glass. Now we can apply a glass just like that and click on close. So we now applied a glass material to our model. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our model is double walled. So if we make a section view of this model, you will see that it's still a solid model, a solid piece of glass, and we're going to make sure it's double walled. And therefore we're going to use a shell feature. So go to insert, features, and click on shell. Now we don't going to select a face, we're just going to make sure that the shell thickness is one millimeter and we click OK. Voila. So now we have made a double walled glass. So we click on the section view again to close it. All right guys, so now we're going to save our file again. And voila, we just completed our glass model. All right guys, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a rendering of our glass model. And this is the rendering we want to make. So therefore we're going to use PhotoView 360. And you can find PhotoView 360 in the top menu. Now, if you don't see uh, PhotoView 360, you can go to Tools, Add-ins, and click on PhotoView 360 right here. Click OK. And now you can find the PhotoView 360 menu right here. So if you click on this, we can edit the appearance and edit the scene and also uh, change the uh, render settings if we want. And we go to Edit Scene. For this rendering, we're going to use a soft spotlight. So click on the soft spotlight scene. Click OK. Now we're going to make a preview of our work. So go to PhotoView 360 and click on Preview Window. And now it sort of asks to add a camera or turn on the perspective for a better realistic view. So in this case, we're going to use a camera. So click on add a camera. Just like that. And now in the left window, we can change the position of our camera by dragging on the arrows. So drag on this green arrow. We can choose a lower camera angle for a more dynamic view. We can also zoom in a little bit, just like that. And we can also change the camera rotation if we want by dragging on this slider right here. It can be nice to add a very small camera rotation of just three degrees, for example, for a little bit more dynamic view. All right, this looks good. So we're going to close this camera for now, click OK. Now we're going to photo view 360 again and we're going to make a preview of our scene. So click on preview window. It's gonna take a while. And here you go. Here you can see our view. It's already looking pretty good. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate the environment a little bit because we don't want this corner in the in our rendering. So go to Photo View 360 again, click on Edit Scene. And if you go to the Advanced Settings, we can change the environment rotation. So if you drag to this slider, you can change the rotation of the environment. And you can immediately see what's happening in the preview window. So we're going to search for a nice angle. I think 90 degrees will look good because the glass looks very nice right here. But I want to zoom in the camera a little bit. So I th we keep the environment rotation on 90 degrees. Click OK. Now we're going to adjust our camera. Therefore, we're going to View, Light and Cameras, Properties, Camera 1. This brings her back in our camera menu. Now we're going to zoom in on our glass a little bit. So we're going to change our camera lens, and therefore we're going to change this 50 millimeters into custom angle. And we're going to drag to the slider until we have the desired result. Don't want to go too close, a little bit 
further just like that i think this will look pretty good all right we click ok and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a high resolution rendering of this therefore we're going to photo view again and click on options and here we can change the resolution of our rendering now 1920 is perfect for now so i keep the default settings for now and then click ok and if you go to photo view 360 again and click on final render the rendering will start this can take a while depending on your computer and graphical card our rendering is completed now we can save the now we can save the rendering by clicking on save image we're going to make sure that we save our file as a jpeg and we call this image double world class now we can browse to the folder where we want to save our work and click on save so here's our rendering the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it a little bit more exciting by adding ice cubes and liquid into the glass so I searched on the internet for an image with ice cubes and I found this image and now we're going to use Photoshop to insert uh, those liquids with ice cubes into our rendering so make sure to open Photoshop now if you don't have Photoshop you, you can download a free trial on the Adobe website all right guys so we're going to file click on open we're going to browse to our rendering and click on open again here's our rendering okay so we're going to drag this image into Photoshop just like this and now we can change the size a little bit by dragging on one of the corners just like that all right so in Photoshop you can make you can add multiple layers on top of each other all right so what we're now going to do is we're going to select this liquid with with uh, ice cubes using the pen tool and then we can insert that into our model so click on the pen tool right here and now we're going to draw a curve which is and uh, going from here to here and then all around the ice cubes so click on the starting point right here now we're going to click and drag click and hold our mouse button right here in order to make a curve this will look good all right release the mouse button hold down the alt and click on this point to end the spline handle now we're going to make another point right here click and hold the mouse again we're going to make this curve as well i think this will look pretty good release the mouse button Hold down the Alt button again and click on the endpoint to close the spline handle. Now we're going to draw some extra points right here for the ice cubes. All right, now right mouse click and click on Make Selection. Click OK. So now we're going to copy this selection. So go to Edit and click on Copy. Now we're going to hide our layer, so click on this little eye icon right here. And now we're going to insert our newly selected ice cubes. So you can click on Ctrl V to paste it in, or go to Edit and then click on Paste. All right, so now we're going to change the position a little bit. So click on the Move tool, and we're going to drag our liquid a little bit to here just like that and now if you hold down the control key you can also select one uh, corner make sure that our layer is fitting perfectly with our glass so we can change it a little bit play around with it a little bit until you have the desired result i think this will look pretty good all right click ok now we can change the transparency a little bit so we make it a little bit more transparent if we want so you can find the transparency tab right here we're going to change the fill into 95 for example 
and we're going to change the display style from normal into multiply and this will make sure that our reflection goes through our glass all right so the next thing uh, to make it a little bit more believable that the liquids in the glass is we're going to add a reflection right here and therefore we're going to use a white gradient we're going to add this gradient ourselves into photoshop so therefore we're going to make a new layer so click on the new layer icon right here go to the pen tool again and now we're going to draw a curve from here from this lower end point up to here for example hold down your mouse button and we're going to make a curve like this release your mouse button click on the alt button to end the spline command right here now we're going to draw another spline right here a third one right here and the fourth one right here all right now right click and click on make selection to make a new selection now we're going to make a gradient starting from here to here from white into transparent so click on the gradient icon you can find it under the paint bucket tool so click on gradient tool and this will make sure that we're going to create a gradient from one color to transparent in my case it's white i want it white but let's say if this is black for example you can change the color of your gradient right here but white to transparent is perfect for now so click ok and now i'm going to click and drag my mouse button from here up till here all right now i'm going to deselect my layer by clicking on ctrl d and i'm going to change the transparency of our gloss a little bit because it, this is far, way too hard so go in the feature tree to our layer and change the fill from 100 into 50 for example just like that all right guys this is already starting to look very good the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some liquid some splashing liquid around our glass to make it a little bit more exciting so i found this image on the internet from a splashing liquid and i'm going to insert this into our rendering as well so click and drag the image into a photoshop just like that we're going to enlarge it a little bit click ok now we're going to change the display style from normal into multiply just like that all right now we're going to make sure it's a little bit higher if you hold down the if you hold down the shift key you can also um, enlarge it in one direction play around with it a little bit until you have the desired desired result all right this starts this looks very good click ok all right guys the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make a reflection of this splashing liquid with the ice cubes and therefore i'm going to this selection tool and i'm going to select this entire face right here and i'm going to edit and click on copy merge and i'm clicking on ctrl v to paste this layer into our model now we have created a new layer the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to reflect this this layer because it will be a mirror plane so go to edit transform and click on flip vertical all right now i'm going to change the position up till here i can use the control and click button right here to adjust the image a little bit until it perfectly fits our ground all right click ok now i'm going to change the transparency right here so go to fill and change it into 20 percent for example all right here we go so the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove some of the white and gray space around our rendering therefore i'm going to this to this selection tool again 
and we go to draw a rectangle from here up to here. So we're going to remove that gray area on the right side. And now I'm going to image and click on crop. All right, guys, I'm pretty happy with the, with the end result. And as you can see, this, this image looks much better than the original screenshot of the SolidWorks model. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to save our work. So go to file, click on save. We're going to save our Photoshop file. We're also going to make a JPEG file of this image. So go to file, save a copy. Change the save as type into a JPEG. And give it a name. Double what class is perfect for now and click on save. All right, guys, that's all for now. I hope you liked this tutorial. Now, if you want to become a SolidWorks Pro by modeling this Austin Modern 177, this American Chopper, this Sunseeker Predator Super Yacht, and this Boeing 747-8, I highly recommend to attend my free SolidWorks workshop. And you can find a link with more information about the workshop under this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel like this video and visit learnsolidworks.com for many more SolidWorks product modeling videos. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off now, but I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.